So what do the students in this class learn? Well, we basically learned the hydraulics and uh, electronics part of it and also climbing and safe access to heights. Got it. So basically the entire system of the generator, um, all the hardware, do they learn software as well? I assume uh, there's some software associated with it. That'll be on the IMT side, it'll be on okay. the back side. So yeah, PLCs and uh, uh, yeah, definitely on that side of, of the schooling. Yep, okay. Yeah. Cool, and then so they'll learn the safety, how to climb, because I mean, they're massive. Like I would not get on the top of one of them. So three to four hundred. you guys feet. are very brave, by the way. Um, so they're three to 400 feet up. So yeah, if I see you guys got proper climbing gear here, all the proper, proper rigging. So they'll yes. go through the process here to learn what to use. Obviously they're connecting every step or every few steps, right? Oh, they're being connected by a last staff. So there's a wire that runs up the ladder okay. and connected by your D-ring. So okay. uh, you're always tied up 100% no matter what. Okay. Um, yeah, so we, we teach them that. The tools also work positioner. So if you get tired, you throw down on the ladder, shake your arms out. Take a, take take a, a rest. breather, yep. And also our last safe, which we tie off on the top. If we're on the roof, yeah, something to tie off to. So a lot of different ways so we don't fall. Okay. Our hat, make sure we keep our noggin right. Of course, you need that. <laughs> need to protect what what part of brains we might or might not have. Yes, sir. And then, so what is what is this? This is our mock tower. Okay. This is our mock tower. So we do over the edge. Uh, we te we teach how to use a Milan rescue device and also. Uh, how to descend properly out of a tower in case we have an emergency. Yeah, you gotta, like if you gotta go, you you're gotta not go. climbing down, it's yep. like, you're like, a, like a climber would rappel down. Exactly, on okay. the way, yes sir. Okay. Yes sir. So Interesting. we have over the edge, we have, as if we're coming out of the hatch or the bomb bay doors, which is the bottom of the cell, so we can get out of the tower fast. Okay. So there's mock, so they'll actually, and then over here, so this is, representative of the actual systems that are inside of those massive towers. towers. Yes. Um, this is part of IMT, so this is robotics, this is pneumatics, which we really don't run in the tower. Okay. But we implement that in our program. Because they need to learn it, because maybe they do something that's very relevant to this. Exactly, yep. exactly. And then here we have our electronic part. So we have a turbine, a little mock turbine. Okay. And we have solar right here. Um, yeah, it's up there in the oh, okay, <laughs> up in the uh, cabinet part up here. So we teach them ACDC theory and how to basically lotto, which means to lock out, tug out uh, your your energy your energy supply so you, you don't get shocked. Yep. So this is all troubleshooting. So all I, troubleshooting. I imagine that you guys effectively set traps for the students to yeah. figure out what's wrong. Well, yeah. And there's multiple configurations of what's failed so that when they get in the real world and they're actually on top of one of these, uh -huh. they can systematically process the failure. Troubleshooters. Replace the part, repel down and go home. Yep. Safely yep. to the fam. Well, we don't repel down all the time. That's just for emergencies. Okay, climb, got it. Climb on climb. down. But okay. Yeah, troubleshooting, troubleshooting. That's what, that's what we're trying to build up competence in using electronics and also hydraulics. That's what's mainly in the tower. So, so, I've always wondered what's in those towers. So the windmill spins and yes. what's happening, that's not just a generator on the top, there's actually hydraulics in there? There's hydraulics to pitch the blaze in and out of the wind. Ah. Also, the cell, the top part of it, the house part of it, moves in and out of the wind as well. So there's an anemometer up there that shows wind direction. Ah, to get shows. maximum efficiency on the day, the way the wind's blowing. Exactly. Got it. Exactly. So the so, generator is kind of a dummy. The generator's there, it's spinning, it's creating power. Exactly. But the magic comes in understanding the angles of the wind, the blades, and getting as much power as you can get on any given day. Exactly. Got it. And Just that is, I imagine, wind. what is, because generators, I mean, I, I know electrics can fail, yes. but I would imagine seals and, and pistons and things like that become Fluid, failure right. points. Yes, sir. Fluid loss, stuff like that. Yep. Got yep. it. Yes, sir. So, um, so they're learning how to read troubleshoot, schematics. replace. Um, read schematics. I, read schematics, yep. got it, yep. And, Very cool. Uh, yeah, so that's what we do. So we'll have a schematic book and 
the action hoses on the side on the sides there, we uh, put together and create a fault, and you have to go back through and see where it might be reversed or got it. The ball valves closed or open. So yeah. With respect to the wind turbine class, how long is this program? Seven months. Seven months, and so Start you. Finish. So from the couch, come to UTI for seven months. That's right. You learn how to safely go up and down the turbines. Correct. You've learned how to troubleshoot all the electrical systems, all the hydraulic systems. Yes, sir. And you're ready to go get your entry level in the field job. Yes, sir. Seven months. Seven months. Wow. Seven months. That's amazing. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's amazing. We, uh, we, we, we have uh, probably about 30, 30 years of experience between the train instructors and I, you know, about 30 years of, of just tribal knowledge yeah. in the field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, almost 14 years on the road. So, you did? Yes, sir. Okay. Not, so you're a brave man, not scared to go up 300 feet? Never, never been afraid of heights. Yeah. Never been afraid of heights. Wow. Would you like to check it out? Maybe, maybe you were a bird in a previous life. Or maybe. <laughs> that or I have screws like my wife <laughs> Yes. Uh, yeah, let's check this out. Yeah. So this is a mock tower? Yes. Okay. This is only this is only 20 feet. Okay. This, that's all it is, but... But this is, this is basically, like if I went in the base of a tower, it would look like this? In no, some level? it would not look like this. Okay. Because you have bottom cabinets, which are uh, electronics. And you have uh, a lot of wires, three-face wires that like run up the uh, middle of the tower. Uh, you have this guard wire okay. right here for a track system like so. And uh, you hook up that last half, which is right here, to the wire. Yep. And this is all that's keeping you from falling. Got it. So, and that's got a break. So you go up, clip it, clip it. No, it just rolls. Oh. It just rolls up the ladder. Yep. Got it. If and you if fall, you were to fall, it would it, stop you it immediately. You in milliseconds. Oh. It'll catch you. Yes, sir. Got so we teach you how to climb properly, and also how to be climb, how to climb safe. If they fall, we teach them how to rescue, which we have rescue Randy here, uh, how to rescue each other because- You okay, bro? <laughs> no, he's been through a lot of accidents. <laughs> because um, out in the field, we are our own rescue team. Fire department, they won't come get you. They'll come get you off the ground, but they're not certified to climb the towers. So we are our own rescuers. Got it. You know, we, we got each other's backs. So somebody, somebody happens up there, we're the only ones that can come get you. Got it. So we teach them how to rig right and uh, how to get them off the ladder or off the top of the nacelle, over the edge. You know, so anyway, you go up there, I can get you down. So is on those towers, the ladders on the inside of them? Yes, sir. Okay, got it. Yes, so sir. they're climbing inside. They don't have to worry about the elements. Nope. They're not worried about wind blowing them off. It's just like a slip, whatever the case may be. Yes, sir. Um, and then is all the electronics at the top of the wind turbine? Bottom and top. So you have bottom cabinets and top cabinets. Got it. And okay. that's why we have troubleshoot. So we start with the bottom with the laptop, see where the fault is, yep. where it goes on the skater system. We know where it's at. If we can fix it down here, then we'll fix it down here. If we have to, go, we have to climb, then we'll climb up and take care of business up there. How do uh, that wind, when the power is generated, how does it get back to the grid? It's all on three-phase wire, so it goes from the from it goes from the from the generator down to the pad mount, and pad mount shoots it to the grid, which would be it. a substation. Got it. So there would be a substation at these farms yes. that then is connected to the main grid right. at some level. Yes, sir. Got it. it. Is there the storage? Is there like battery storage, or is it just power transfers? Unfortunately, we have yet have the technology to store you know electricity. So all we can do is basically generate it and shoot it to the grid. So then is there a meter on the grid that like knows that this is coming from the wind and we want to use that energy or it gets wasted? Or is it just kind of all go to just this central thing and people are just sucking off it basically? All central thing. Got it. So it's kind of like, kind of like internet. Yes sir. It's like your internet going to your neighborhood, you got one pipe, have at it. Have at it, got exactly. It. Okay. Exactly. All right. Yes sir. Very cool. Yeah. I love how you guys are just replicating these processes. Like I continue to be impressed in every lab that you guys have like broke it down to such a like, I know it's not simple, but the way that you guys are repeating it is very simple for everybody to get the same experience. Right. And that's, I mean, obviously key when you're 
teaching the next generation of crazy dudes like you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> We've got to simplify it, you know. Yeah. It's definitely uh, uh, something near and dear to my heart. It's a, it's a small community. We have, I think it's like 8,000 techs around the U.S. Wow, only 8,000 yeah. in this whole industry? It's a, it's a niche. Yeah. A niche, uh, well, not perfect. everybody wants to climb three, four hundred feet. That's right. Yeah, not I, everybody I, can. I, I, I respect it because it's not going to be me. <laughs> I'm not scared of heights, but I just don't have interest in being if 400 feet up. If we can get you tower, I believe you would love it. Ooh. You would love it. It's, the office view, bar none, it's the, it's yeah. the best. I'm it's sure the best. It's, I'm sure there's like adrenaline and it's like, you know, it's, you're climbing. I love it. You're, you're bird in it. You're, you're bird life. That's right. All right, so we saw the little mock-up wind turbine in the classroom. This is an actual real chassis. This is a real Decel. It's a real deal. So this right here is where the 300-foot actual turbine that catches the wind would be. Correct. And then coming here, there's obviously a tower in the center right. that you would climb up. Correct. And this then, is actually a radiator. That's what cools the system. Oh, it goes okay. on top. Got it. So they get to troubleshoot, understand that as well. Correct. And then now that you've climbed up, is this representative of how, when you get to the top, what it would look like? It sure is. Okay. It sure is. So you're coming up from the bottom of the. I'll it's follow you. The, it's called the yaw deck. So as soon as you climb up, you hit the yaw deck, and then you climb into the nacelle. Got it. Okay. So now we're in. Now and then in. basically we have, so in there is just gears. Like there's gears. no electric generated there, right? Yeah, just gears. And I see two shafts. With so high speed shaft and low speed shaft. Okay. And then, so is there like a step down gear or something that connects to the generator? Which will be with that orange uh, uh, pieces. Okay. It holds a uh, flywheel. Got there. it. So it, basically from here to there, it'll step it down. That was why I said it's high speed and then it's low, low speed. Got it. So it's it's like what, what we use in our race cars, we have a uh, differential that's very similar. You have the input shaft, there's two gear step downs, and then it goes out to the, the drive shaft. So, there you go. Uh, or sorry, to the axles. So there you go. this is effectively, in my world, this is what the output is. <laughs> this is would be the tire spinning. Right. Um, but this is the generator. So is this constantly evolving and adapting based on the wind speed? It sure is. Okay. It sure is. So uh, I said, the, this whole thing, this whole nacelle will move into the wind. Got it. And the it. blades pitch in and out to catch the best part of the wind. Got so it. So it'll either be, uh, go fast or it'll go slow, depends on the wind speed. But gen all the power is generated here, which is shot down tower to a transformer, and they shot out to the grid, yep. which hits a substation. So say she'll step it up and shoot it off to your house, you wherever, whatever's, whatever's pulling it. Yes, sir. So here at UTI, they're learning every bit of this system, how to troubleshoot, how to install, how to replace. Um, Correct. Where's the, where's the magic? Like, where's the brain of all this? Right here at your top cabinet. You have one right of here. these up tower and you have one down tower. So this is. This is our brain. This is this right this here. literally reminds me of my, my previous uh, life as a computer nerd. This is like a network cabinet to me. Obviously, it's not Ethernet. It's obviously a different type of cable. But uh, troubleshooting, I would imagine, is uh, very process driven. It is that. And you're not just jumping in, throwing parts. Nope. Um, yep. So are these fuses, relays, all the above? All the above. Okay. All the above. Uh, we have a system called the SCADA system that will tell us where the fault is, and then we'll come up here and go through schematics and see exactly where that fault may be. So are you, when you're climbing up, because right now we're 300 feet in the air, do you have your assumed replacement parts with you? Like based on that, or you come up, you troubleshoot, you might have to go back down, go to the truck, bring it back up? You might, you might have to go back down, yeah. the, or call for parts to come out. You could put it, there's a crane that'll be in here, so, you can drop the hoist ah. and with a drop bag, put the part in there and bring it back up. Okay. But usually, we know what that fault is and we can bring the part. Bring the part right back up, right up. Cool. Correct. Wow. So there's a there's a main brain that is constantly processing the voltage and whatever's going on here. The PLC. Okay. The PLC. Yeah. What's that stand for? Project Control Logic. Logic. Ah. Okay. Got it. Yes, okay. Sir. Very cool. Yes, sir. So. This is what you learn at UTI. All this 
every bit of it. Seven months, Seven get months. you ready. Get you ready, electronics, hydraulics. Hardware, hydraulics. Uh, basically the nuts and bolts. Yeah. Whatever you need. So do they sure. come in in this? Do you have trickery in here that they're troubleshooting, or is this more to totally. reference what what this looks like and work? It, yeah, where basically when they leave here, they've already been in one of these and they know what to do. This is or more is this actually okay. This is more reference. Yes, we'll have so them all the troubleshootings in the lab. Correct. This is now. Hey, you've been in the lab. You've seen this. Now we're going to show you what this small box was in real life. The practical part. So they know yes. how to move. They know what to hold on to. What not to hold on to. Exactly. All of that, the familiarization of it. Exactly, exactly. Got it. All the familiarization from the books. Because you start with the book and then you come to practical and you get to put your hands on the machinery yourself. Is this all, like I see the openings in the floor. Is this open? Like would you be seeing down right now or is this all closed off when no, you're in the air? This is all closed off. Okay. Yes. So this it's closed off. Cool. Do you ever need to get on the roof of this? Uh, not for us, no. no okay. But, when you're working? Yes. You do? Oh yeah. What would is a reason why you need to get on the roof of this? As I said, up, up there they have the radiators. Ah. So keeping everything cool, so we'll put that up there. Anemometers go up there to show okay. wind speed and wind direction. So uh, yeah, you definitely have to uh, get on top of here. Some yeah. towers, you got to go on top to get into the hub. It's called a hub jump. Okay. All the old GEs do that. You get the slide over the nose cone to get <laughs> You got to slide I, over the nose the, cone. The, the, this is, Another level person that does this. It's fun. I, I can see fun. that. It can be fun. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of fun. For people that like that kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is a radiator. This holds water. It cools down your, 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 your electronics. Also yeah, because the generator is generating a ton of heat. It's a big old oven. Right. It's a big old oven. So we have is it hot in these when you go in them? It can be. Okay. Winters, it can be nice because it can get nice and cozy. Yeah. Summertime is a whole other story. Yeah, I guarantee it. It could be pretty doggone hot. So If it is hot, like if it's a 100 degree day, do you shut it off for a few hours before you come in? PLCs will tell it when to shut off. Okay. You'll, you'll tell it when it's too hot. Uh, but I mean, like us, if you're going in to work on no, it, you just got to deal with it. You just got to deal with it. That's part of working in the elements. Got it. Snow, uh, cold. We don't do lightning. Okay. Right <laughs> we don't do lightning. Do these get struck by lightning often? We sure do. And what, what happens? Uh, usually it's burning the blade, so we have to do blade repairs, which is composites. Uh, but you'll do a composite repair on, like, up there, you know, yeah. like disassemble it? No, no, sure don't. I'll do it up there in a bucket truck. Uh, 103 meter bu bucket truck. Pelping it, yes I would. Uh -huh. I, I, when you're 300 feet in a bucket truck, I mean, it's moving, right? Oh yeah. Because uh, you ain't be getting nothing sturdy like that. Nope, it's rock and rolling, but I'm up there grinding away and laying my, my layers up and doing my cure time and, oh yeah, painting. Yes, sir. So if you are any type of guy like this guy who loves to be 300 feet in the air, swinging, swaying, <laughs> rocking and rolling, as he says, you might want to check out UTI. Come check us out, yes.